it's, it's, a, it's a power. It's a, it's, a, it's a necessary element in creation. Okay, polarity, metamorphosis, and enhancement. Um, again, you can maybe make a connection with you know, the polarity or duality of the yin yang uh, and, I, and the, the movement that I was uh, trying to addre uh, address. This has to do with this rhythm, this breathing. Right? That something changes as it, as it grows, just like a plant or a child into an adult, uh, into a youth and an adult. Um, an enhancement, of course, I would say in the realm of the human being is our thinking consciousness. It's like the height of this process, this threefold process. The ability to formulate thoughts, to convey them, to share them, to converse. This is perhaps in a conversation is what we could include in this human world as enhancement because we become fully human. We have we come to a freer, not free yet maybe, a freer uh, expression of our human world. look at this phenomenon of peach blossom, why it's so important. And now I'll, I'll start by taking a couple of quotes again. Firstly, in this book here, many of you are familiar with, he's talking about the etheric body. Now, I don't have a whole lot of time to uh, describe or characterize the etheric body. Uh, I think a doctor could probably do that better. <laughs> um, but basically, it's a force field that's totally imperceptible to physical senses. Um, it's a organism uh, very closely linked to the chi of Chinese or prana. Indian Sanskrit, uh, it permeates the physical body and it organizes and, and forms the physical body. So the kingdoms of nature, the human being, the animals, the plants, and some minerals, according to Rudolf Steiner, have a third body or organism. The entire earth has an etheric organism. Uh, this organism is, is clear to those who have a clairvoyant vision. I don't have that, but I can sense it, having done eurythmy, and anyone who has, or if you've done Tai Chi, or any kind of movement where you feel that you are in a sort of flowing, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? It's, it's something that has to do with movement. Maybe Maria will tomorrow help us to experience that. So he's talking about this on page 131 and then goes on to say uh, that, well, first of all, he says that the same size and shape as the physical body and also occupies approximately the same space as the physical body for most of us. It is an extremely delicate, finely organized structure. Its basic color is one not found among the seven colors of the rainbow. As we become able to observe the etheric body with trained clairvoyance, we learn to see a color that actually does not exist for sensory observation. It is best compared to the color of a young peach blossom, or of peach blossoms, young peach blossoms. Of course, to study the etheric body alone, we have to remove the soul body from our perception. Now he goes in to say that as a clairvoyant you're able to, to uh, make something disappear so that you can observe a particular organism. So I won't go further on that. Um, 
there is um, another source that I bring that book. Yeah. In this one, the rediscovery of color. Excellent, outstanding book by Proskauer. Page ninety-nine, and this, by the way, comes with a set with a prism included and a set of. Of, uh, test, you know, black and white, where you can actually hold the prism up and see these different shadings of the prism. So it's really a fun thing to have. Um, talking about the peach blossom, again. Um, Rudolf Steiner calls, well, he's talking about the different colors of luster color and image color. I think we can go a little bit into a diagram of that. He calls them image colors. To these he ascribes, in addition, the human flesh color, incarnadine. Is that the way it's pronounced? An incarnadine. It has the word incarnate in it. Or peach blossom. Of course, he's not talking about the, the skin, the skin flesh, flesh of the color of the skin, but of flesh. So that means that whether you're dark-skinned or light-skinned or green-skinned, you it's about <coughs> to be flesh. So it would mean, you know, the, the pink of our eye or the inside of our mouth, right? Every human being has this color. Basic color. To these he ascribes this incarnadine or peach blossom concerning the way in which this color arises. He, Steiner gives the following interesting description. Imagine that I paint black here, underneath it some black, a little bit of white, here's some more black, again some white, and so on. So there's an interplay of black and white. And you must imagine that the black and white are not still, but in movement. Interesting, right? Weaving into one another. So light and darkness. Weaving. You have to see this more in your imagination. Right? I cannot, of course, paint it, he said. At that point, you could not do it. So you must imagine them weaving into one another and let this interweaving movement of black and white be shown through, irradiated by red. If I were to choose the right shade then, through this interplay of black and white into which I let the red shine, I would get peach blossom. In another location, Steiner says that when the astral body, the body of emotions, uh, desires, all of these that have to do with our feeling life, when we have transformed them, uh, which you could call manas, in esoteric language, a purification of our inner life, as the Buddha did. And you, you are purifying and you become enlightened. Then the astral body, the, the color of peach blossom, is what lives into the etheric body, into the lower uh, principle, lower organism. So peach blossom is the soul's color in the living, in the living etheric body. These concepts are so difficult. Uh, I sometimes still wonder about it, but I think I'm, you know, after about 35 years working on it, beginning to understand that maybe I can help you, those who have heard this before, try to remember, you know, what you heard when you first heard about these things. Or for the people, first time, uh, of course, this involves a little bit deeper into what anthroposophy can uh, ex you know, describe about the human organism, which is not only physical, but spiritual, imperceptible. But there are four image colors that Steiner calls uh, white, black, peach blossom, and green. So these are image colors. An image, of course, means that something is casting itself 
as a reflected, um, <coughs> what would you say, uh, image, well, it's the best word, is the image of something. So our highest nature is our, well, our, at this point of our existence, our he ego is in trying to find its stand in the world. And that's a, that's a picture of the spirit. Right? The spirit in the human being is our, is, uh, you know, can be in very many dimensions, but the, the ego is, is an expression of the spirit. The astral body, this body of organism that is our soul nature, more, uh, maybe we'll hear more about this in, in a couple of lectures from now, uh, where the feeling life is expressed, that has a color. And when that is purified, when the blood of the desires of our lives are purified, <coughs> then it becomes this peach blossom. And that's what is expressed in the living organism, the etheric. The etheric is, uh, has this green color, which is the, the image of the living in the physical body. A physical body, if it's left alone, is a, is, a, is a body that has no life force. If it has no life force, it is a lifeless. So green is an image of this etheric body, this living organism, in the lifeless. And then black is an image of the lifeless in the spirit. So black, or non-color, we could call black, of course, a color, or we may call it a non-color. But in any case, it's a picture of the lifeless in the spirit. And the spirit, of course, its color is white, the pure white. Expression of, you could say, the purest, uh, and that's why a lily, of course, is always a picture of purity, right? Or a white dove, please. How do these different uh, colors <coughs> relate to one another? So, you know, we have the... Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yellow. This is, these are the three primary colors, right? Red, yellow, blue. And this is a term that he uses, Diner, uh, called luster or shine. I think maybe there are other words too. Uh, then there are the image colors, and that is white, peach blossom, green, and black. So, how does peach blossom arise? You, see, you remember he was saying that if you mingle the black and the white. If you can paint that, this white creates this peach blossom. So, and then the black and the white. <coughs> and the red is shining through could say the peach blossom is also in a um, irradiated magenta. The magenta that you see in a prism of the pure, pure red, when it is illumined with light and an element of the blackness or darkness, then you have this 
pure peach blossom arising. And you've seen, perhaps most of you have, or you've done paintings, artistic creations where you've tried to paint the peach blossom. It's very difficult, uh, not easy. Uh, but, you know, it's, there, we're all on the way, we're all the way, even the painters have to, those who are specifically training, have to develop a sensitivity for what this peach blossom could be. And in Eurythmy, of course. Uh, and the white and black mingling, the light shining through. And you have, perhaps you could say, you have a picture of the human being.